From the nonpartisan Maddie Institute and the California Channel at the State Capitol, this is a Maddie Policy Brief. Welcome. Our guest is California's legislative analyst, Mac Taylor, who's going to give us a summary of state and local finances in California. So why is uh, personal income tax the main source of state revenue, and why is it so much more volatile than the economy? Well, it wasn't always. We used to rely much more heavily on the sales tax, but over time, the reliance on the sales tax has dropped, and it's increased dramatically for the personal income tax, which now comprises two-thirds of our general fund revenue, our main operating account. And the personal income tax has become more dominant because income has grown. We have a lot more capital gain income. We have a lot of high income people. We have a very progressive rate structure. So we're now very dependent on it. And it's very volatile because you have some sources, capital gains, business income, stock, in, uh, stock option income, things like that that are very volatile. And when the markets change, those things can change even more dramatically. And I was reading uh, in Calfax that at the top 1% of income earners paid half of the income taxes in 2012. And so that top 1% can have billions of, of dollars of influence a absolutely. on state finances. And those people obviously have much less reliance on wage and salary income that most people rely on They're in the market. for the vast majority. They're in the market, they have business income, right. and so uh, we have a very volatile revenue structure. Okay. Um, probably not a good thing, uh, I'm guessing. Uh, it has good and bad aspects. You have a very robust source of, of, of income. It grows with the it's income more bust, faster. Though. But it is boom and bust, which means you have to manage it much more carefully. And there's that rainy day fund. That's what we we'll always get back to that. <laughs> okay. Well, what about corporate uh, tax liability? How has that uh, changed over time? Well, corporate taxes have never been a, a real crucial part. They've been as high as 15, 16, 17 percent. More recently, more around 10 or even a little bit less. Uh, it used to be that you could just, if you knew what corporate profits were going to be, you knew what your corporate mm -hmm. revenues. You just apply the rate that we uh, uh, impose upon corporations on businesses. In recent years, that's, de that's departed. And now, if you can estimate profits, it doesn't necessarily mean you've got your uh, revenues that are coming from the corporate tax because of various tax exemptions and various pr uh, provisions that we've adopted. Some people might call them loopholes. Um, I don't think they're loopholes. We know what we're doing. We, we, well, they actually do use tax policy as a way to, for public policy purposes. And to change behavior. Yeah. They're given for pr very particular reasons. What about sales tax? Uh, what's going on with sales tax? Again, as we sort of alluded to, sales tax has declined over time. And that's basically because we tax tangible things, things you can touch and feel, clothing and cars and things like that. We don't tax services. And services have, the cost of services have been growing much faster and we spend more on services. So sales tax as a percent, say, of the state's economy has declined over time. Yeah, I think time. I was reading that, that, that services are about 80% of the economy. Uh, it's, it's a large part of the state economy. I believe I have that right. I, I'm sure if I don't, people will correct me. Um, well, let's talk about the major source for local jurisdictions, mm -hmm. uh, cities, counties, and special districts. Where do they get their money? Very differently. If you look at a city, they rely on property taxes and sales taxes a lot. But they also, because they provide what are called municipal services, they might do the trash or water, they'll have fees that they charge people for those particular things. So they collect a lot in what are called charges. Counties, on the other hand, get very little sales tax. They have a lot of property taxes, and they get a lot of money from the state and federal governments because they administer a lot of our health and human services programs. Right, specific programs. Well, let me turn our attention to uh, what's called ballot box budgeting. It's a mouthful. Uh, propositions uh, that typically yeah. direct how money is spent. Most probably famous are Prop 13 that limited property tax increases and Prop 98 that is a special guarantee, minimum guarantee for school funding. What impact has that had on state and local finances? Well, Prop 13 had enormous impact in that it obviously limited a local revenue source, property taxes, and it also, in effect, consolidated a lot, of, uh, consolidated a lot more decision-making in Sacramento because we had control over the allocation of property taxes. So it is, it, it's had enormous implications for the way that we govern and the relationship between state and local governments. As far as our year-to-year -year budgeting, Proposition 98, which deals with school funding, is enormously important because you have to be, before you do the rest of the budget, you have to know, well, how much does 98 require to be set aside for schools? And then you have the rest of the budget after you make that calculation. Proposition 2, which the voters just approved in November, will also have very important budgeting implications, and it interacts with Proposition 98. Yeah. So these formulas that are in the Constitution have made budgeting a lot more complicated. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about the expense side uh, of the ledger for a second. Uh, has state spending increased over time? Well, certainly it's increased just in, in sort of nominal dollars. That is, you haven't adjusted for inflation. We, we use a measure in Calfax on one of the charts that pegs state spending to the state's economy. So you can sort of get a sense of, is it becoming a greater share of right. the economy or not? And if you look back to the 50s and the 60s and 70s, even early 80s, 
the state's share of, of the economy was growing pretty significantly. But after you get to the early 1980s and compare it with now, it's fluctuated, but it's sort of stayed around 8% and going up and down. So that means that while spending is growing because the economy is growing, the share has not changed right, So the actual dollars are increasing, but the yes. percentage is staying about the same. Yeah, so it kind of depends on which way you want to look at That's it. That's right. Half empty or half full, I guess. Exactly. Um, so let's talk about some of the major expenses um, in the state budget. Um, what are the major expenses in the state budget? Well, if we you talk about education. Absolutely. If you think about this pie of total state spending, over half of that pie is going to be for education, both K-14 or, you know, schools and community colleges and higher education. Mm -hmm. The rest of the budget, you got maybe a quarter of it, is in health and human services with Medi-Cal, the health care program for low-income people, by far away dominating that health and human services spending. And then you have corrections, our state prisons and courts, which is about a tenth of state spending. Yeah, so a 10%. A lot of people think prisons are the most expensive thing the state uh, spends money on. It's not. It's education. They do, and I think it's a little bit understandable because in the 80s and 90s, we were building a lot of prisons, and a lot of the marginal dollars, that is, the additional dollars that were coming in, had to go to prisons because their share was rising during that time. I'm, I'm running out of time in this segment, but I want to ask you one last quick question. That is about major long-term liabilities uh, for the state. Are they being addressed, do you think? Generally, they are being addressed. Pensions are being funded, the unfunded liabilities being amortized over 30 years. The single biggest thing that we're not dealing with is our state retiree health benefits. Okay. For a more in-depth analysis of this and other public policy issues important to Californians, please log on to our website at maddieinstitute.org and click on the Policy Analysis tab.